kids just watch yes. everything we do. Okay. So. So, you went from alcohol mm -hmm. at the age of eight. Mm -hmm. uh, then you started smoking cigarettes. Cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Did your mom, dad smoke? Yes, they did. I didn't see my father smoke, but I watched my mother smoke. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, um, I want to I want to ask you oh, if if your if your mom's promiscuity affected you. I would say yes. Everything she did affected me. The way she carried herself affected me. Like you said. My hair is this way, this week. Next week, it may be another way. Is that the way your mom was? She was yes, fly? Yes, she was fly. Really? She kept her hair Because you fly, girl. Thank you. Yeah. She kept her hair together. Um, she did her makeup. She most days walked like a lady. She was giving. Um, and I wanted to be all of that, you okay. know? Because she got, seemed like rewarded. She didn't have to work. We call it like retirement now, mm -hmm. but she was retired like before she started work. Yeah, you okay. know, um, uh -huh. she seemed like she lived a good life. You right. know, when mm -hmm. she wasn't spiraling down from, from the, the alcohol. The alcohol, yes. yes. So yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be that. Yeah, you know, um, the thought comes to my my mind is that okay, your mom was a stay at home. She was a stay at home mom. Yes, which meant she had a lot of time on her hands. Too much time on her hands. And the Bible says an idle mind is the I devil's mind. workshop. And it was the devil's workshop uh, in my home. And yes. and even us today, when we have idle time, mm -hmm. we better put something in it positive. Yes. Or we could be opening up a, a Pandora's box for another addiction. Yes. And I'm just saying that because, yes. uh, um, you know, I, I, I've been riding my motorcycle now for about you know, a year and a half and, 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 uh, I try to ride that bad boy as often as I possibly can. And I, since I know that I have an addictive personality, I have to be careful of that. I have to be careful of what I eat because I can become addicted to, to food, mm -hmm. uh, sex, uh, mm -hmm. uh, working. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so a lot of times when people talk about addicts or suffering from the disease of addiction, their minds go straight to what? Drugs. Drugs or alcohol. Or alcohol or sex. But that's not mm -hmm. right. But that's not the only arena where addiction can manifest itself. Yes, addiction can manifest itself in shopping. Right. Um, how about behavioral patterns? You could be addicted to always wanting to just fuss, you know, just fuss all the time, you know, conflict. Um, uh, when things are in an uproar, you're more comfortable. When things are at peace, you got to make something happen sometimes. Mm, mm, mm. That's something. That's something. That's one thing I like about this radio broadcast. Uh, uh, I can learn so much from, from you. Um, and, and, and giving a message of hope. Because uh, no matter how old we get, you know, I'm a little over 39 now. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, but no matter how old we get, we can always learn something. Yes. I mean, you can become, you just said become addicted to fussing. Yes. You know? Uh, but anyhow, what happened? How did you, what happened that that you said you were looking in your son's eyes and you realized that, that, that something had to change? What were you doing at that time? I was hungover. I was high. Um, what kind of drugs were you using? I was using crack cocaine. I felt like I was in a daze. Um, I was out. You know, it's usually when we out. That's when we want to think about what we done just did. You know, it's usually after the fact. Um, I realized, what am I going to do When you say you tomorrow? were out, do you mean like you're out, out the drugs. house? I was out of oh, drugs. Oh, you I had no more drugs. Of, That's what I you meant. no out. more drugs. I mm -hmm. had a clarity moment. Oh, yes. As high as I was, I, I was, I understood that I had no more money, oh, no more resources. Mm -hmm. It was in the middle of the morning. My five-year-old at the time was awake. You know, who, what five-year-old is awake in the middle of the morning? Um, and I realized we had nothing to eat, you know, and we were getting put out again. Um, I had nowhere else to go. So, were you a single mom at this time? Yes. Yes, I was. I'm a single mom now at this time. Yeah, but, okay, well, I'm not going to get into that. But anyhow, you were single, you were a single mom yes. raising, and I knew you had a daughter, but now you had a son too. I have a son, yes. Okay, and, 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 and uh, both of the children were in the house at this time? No. My son will be 30 this year. Okay. Um, he was about five years old. When I was still getting high. Okay. And you were raising him by yourself? By myself. Man. In an apartment. All right. Get ready to get put out. Bills weren't being paid. Bills were not paid. No, none of the bills were paid. Right. Car was already repossessed. Mm. Uh, the lights were on, but that's about it. And okay. um, I was out.
was out of money. I was out of drugs. And this five-year-old was still up in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Isn't, isn't it, you talked about a moment of clarity. Isn't, uh, it's amazing what we can realize when everything is, is gone that yes. takes our minds off of reality. Yes. The drug's gone, the alcohol gone, mm-hmm. the man gone, the woman mm-hmm. gone, the apartment gone, mm-hmm. the dog gone. Matter mm-hmm. of fact, dog gone. <laughs> everybody dog, was everybody, gone. Everybody, everything gone. Now you're left with yourself, and yes. you got to think about what's going on. You know, that's, a lot of people commit suicide at that time. Yes. Yes. I felt like I was already dead, to be honest. Um, but suicide didn't come to mind. What came to mind was my life has got to change. You know, I was young. Um about 23. I mean, come on, my life, it, this couldn't be as good as it get. I didn't believe that. So I don't know what happened next. What I do know is I packed my son up. I knew we had to get out of that apartment before I got thrown out on the street, which I saw that happen often in my life, coming up with my single parent mother. Um, you saw your mom get put out? Yes. But she didn't say we were getting put out. She just said we were moving, moving. again. We're moving. You know, we okay. moved from one side of the street to the other side of the street and then back to the other side of the street. Really? True story. Mm-hmm. Same block. Insanity. Three house. Insanity was doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And she couldn't stop drinking. Well, she wouldn't stop drinking. That's what killed her. Um, but she... I said she couldn't. You said she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. I, th- I think that both of them are the same. And, and, and the reason why I'm saying that it, she was it's, caught up it's, in the word because you can be in a in, in a situation where you know what you need to do, but, but you, you just you can't. Yes, you want to do, but you can't. Yes, even Paul in the New Testament talks about that which I want to do, do is not is not what I do, mm-hmm. but that which I don't want to do that's I what do. I do. That's right. So we got to pray and yes. ask God to yes. come in to help us to do what we know we need to do because we can't do it by ourselves. And I think that's, that's the true. reason I think that's the reason why the third step is so powerful in our in our in our in our in our recovery process where we where we made this decision to turn our world and our lives over to the care of God as we understood it. Right. See, because there's no way in the world that we could have recovered. I'm just saying I'm I'm speaking for you too because I'm alone. We, there's no way in the world that we could recover alone. This is true. I mean I mean I mean, I, I stopped using drugs. It had to be at least four hundred and ninety times. Okay. <laughs> I had to stop drinking at least 760 times. But, couldn't stay. But it couldn't stay. Why? Because I was trying to do it what, by, by myself. Yourself. Right, right. Only when, I, only when I found when I found help in the, in the 12-step program, in the Moons of Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, not in the church. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in the church. No. In the church, I was being ridiculed. Matter of fact, I couldn't tell people in the church That's what right. I was really doing right. because of the, of, of the fear of what? Tell them, of what? Exposure, Ex- ridicule, treat you badly, right. look Talking at you about sideways. All of that, all of that. You shouldn't tell some people nowadays you're in recovery. Yeah, well, where I, I am today. Yeah, well, where I, I where I am today, you know, I'm I'm, I'm just. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Know, doesn't matter n- not to me. Okay. I, it doesn't matter to me because what people think about me, what the you know, I let people know I'm. A, I, that's my testimony. What God that's has right. done for me in my life. Okay. And 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 even and even. Because uh, the Bible says that, that that God is everywhere. If I choose to make my bed in hell, God is there. Yes. So even if I'm around my enemies and they don't want to hear what I'm saying, but I give a testimony of what God has done for me uh, as far as relieving me from a 30-year drug addiction, then somebody, mm-hmm. even who doesn't like me, might say, my God, they mm-hmm. did that. Mm-hmm. God did that for him. Well, maybe, mm-hmm. he can maybe, do something for me. maybe he can do something for me. Hope. Yep. You with me? Yes, I am. And and but I mean that's where I am. That's okay. not, not where you are. And I'm not saying that everybody needs to be where I am. Because right. some people some people won't even come on this radio broadcast because even though they might share in a room of twelve step program, but they don't want to talk about it outside. They don't want to talk about true. they don't want to talk about it, you know, and 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 and, uh, and I respect that. I respect that. But on the flip side of that is uh if there's nobody like you to testify about what God has done. A lot of us will stay trapped. People going to stay trapped. That's the reason why mm-hmm. we, we talk about our predecessors, what they did. Mm-hmm. If nobody had come, if I, if, if I had come around in 1988 and wanted to get clean, but there was nobody that I could see who had gotten clean, mm-hmm. do you know what I probably would have done? Still getting high. Still getting high. Mm-hmm. Somebody got to be a witness. What do you think? 
I don't believe that. That's why I, I got you that. here. Okay, I'm gonna be your. Witness. All right. So what happened? Here you got you go pack your stuff up. You're moving again. Where'd you get the help? Where where'd the hope come in? The hope came in through prayer. You know, after I looked at my son, of course I prayed about it. I have always been one to believe that God could restore me to something. So were you brought up in the church? Raised? Yes, I was I was raised in the church okay. when I was really, really little. Um, my mom was raised in the church. Her mom was a pastor. Uh, so we had the idea of God. Okay. Uh, we could say my childhood was extremely rough at one time. So I mm -hmm. had to believe that something could get me out of that. Okay. Now I'm a young adult. That same something that took me through my childhood, I believed he was still there. So I called on God. And it, you mean you, as you were packing, did you get on your knees? Did you scream out? How? Did well, you go I to didn't trip? really did have you? time okay. to um, get on my knees. I had to get on uh, the notion that what is my solution? Okay, you can't stay here. You have to move forward. So I packed. I got okay. on the bus. I took my son and his bike and a trash bag to my aunt's house, who didn't know I was coming, mm -hmm. and um, asked her to just give me a place to stay while I tried to get myself together. And like I said, the car was gone. So, you know, I had too many things going on. To, I couldn't just sit still and wallow in my mess. I had to get into my solution. So that's what I did. All right. It so, seemed easy, but it was extremely hard. It was extremely humbling to knock on my aunt's door and ask her, can me and my son come stay there? You think she knew that you were getting high? Of course she did. She probably didn't know to what extreme you know, things that got. And a lot of times when we are suffering from any addiction, we hide things. You know, we hide packages. We hide uh, boxes. We go mm -hmm. shopping. We hide bags as women. We just hide stuff. Um, we hide our inability to maybe have one partner. Um, we hide so many things. We mm -hmm. hide our unmanageability of our funds, you know, until the lights get cut off. We lie. We lie. That's um, you lie. You doggone right, I lied. My wife is mad. You still you, you still smoke? No, baby, not. <laughs> I mean, I don't lie today, but I'm just being honest. Yes. You know, when you caught up in your addiction, you're gonna lie. Yes. You know, well, uh, I'm I'm sick today. I can't come in. All yes. right. You, you're sick one. You got a hangover, or you, or the dope is there. You won't want to leave it, or whatever. You know yes. what I mean? I mean, or your whatever your whatever your addiction is. I'm just being for real, for real. Yes. And so and so, how did you get get clean? What happened? Did you go to treatment or what happened? Well, I reached out to um, someone at the time, and they mentioned to me I could do outpatient. Um, so that's what I did. I did 